Mr. Navarsky, please follow me. While you were in the air, there was a military coup in your country. The Republic of Krakosia is under new leadership. Krakosia? <laughs> I don't think he gets it. Where do I buy the Nike shoes? I'm going to need the passport also. Oh, okay. No, okay. No, no, take you. no, 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 no. No, Mr. Navorsky. Beyond those doors is American soil. You are not to leave this building. There's a man walking around the terminal in a bathrobe. I think it's CIA. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. That guy doesn't even speak English. I, I, I help you. Do you live nearby? Yes. Get 67. Because we are very particular about punctuality. Did you say gate 67? We don't play for cash. We play for unclaimed items from the lost and found. Wild stallion, you help me to win her heart, and you'll never go hungry again. Officer, my friends say you are a stallion, what? like a horse. Stand behind the O line. Opa, this belong you. Thanks. Hello, hello, hello. Long time no see. It has been a minute or two, and. Uh... <laughs> Guess what day it is today? Today is my birthday. Are you serious? Yes. Oh my God, why didn't you tell me? I, Happy I, birthday! <laughs> I just told you now, so yeah, just try to get that reaction. That's right. why you said you have a birthday dinner. Yes, that's correct. Oh my God, happy birthday. Feliz cumpleaños. Oh. <laughs> Gracias, my senorita. So what are you planning to do? Work, 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 do this, and then do some more work, and then uh, go out for a meal, and that's it. So I did do a wonderful thing for myself, and I bought, I did a little cheeky gift on Amazon. Um, it should be coming tomorrow, so I'm going to... What? What did I you bought myself um, a, a giz, no, a gizbo. Um, a stabilizer for cell phones so I can make some really cool like content with my cell phone and things like that so when I uh, uh -huh, they won't let it like yeah move exactly. around and everything that's yeah. nice you want to be an influencer say again you want to be an influencer I don't know I don't want to be I but I am an influencer already so there's something you don't know um but yes but don't worry uh once I get uh, get good at it, you'll start seeing my Instagram blow up when I'm ready to blow back up on Instagram. Yeah. So give me what time. are you gonna What are you gonna make? Say again. What content? Are I'm you well. I'm a big time. I'm a traveler, so I'm gonna be taking a content of places I've gone to, events I'm seeing, and then um yeah so but you'll see my life through my eyes or creative eye so you'll see it soon okay nice and are you gonna get drunk today say again are you gonna get drunk today no of course not i'm not one to get drunk so i i will drink responsibly if i do decide to drink and i will come back into my own bed and you know have a good night rest so i can take on are you gonna blow the candle and make a wish uh perhaps the night is still young for me to be able to determine if uh if candles or cake is involved but we shall see how many people are invited uh clearly we're missing one we're missing you right so clearly, and how many but everyone not all the essentials are there and how many people are there? Uh, me and a small select few of my friends. It's all. We can't hear you then. It's an intimate gathering. Ah, uh, uh, like five people, six. Yes, let's go with that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we uh, go in. Okay. <coughs> all right, so. Um, so, Celia, you're going to have to cut a lot of that intro. But um, 
This week we're talking about. I'm not. I'm not cutting anything. You never cut nothing. I like <laughs> it raw, eh? I like it raw. <laughs> oh, guys, there you go. Put that on a shirt. Celia says she likes it raw. <laughs> oh my goodness! Not today, back no, not today. Um. So yeah. So today we're talking about uh, 2004 Steven Spielberg movie, uh, The Terminal. Which, mm-hmm. which has to, uh, Tom Hanks, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Stanley Tucci, Zoe Zaldana, uh, Diego Lugo, uh, Luna. Sorry, um, this movie came out 2004 um, on a 60 million dollar budget, and on box office has made 20, uh, 220 million dollars in US. So, um, again, this is a movie review. So, a spoiler alert: if you've clicked on this, not expecting to hear about the movie. What are you doing? Um, so anyway, so the movie essentially uh, talks about uh, an, an immigrant, uh, and someone that came out of the country, uh, Victor Novosky, played by Tom Hanks, um, who is essentially, almost essentially forced to stay within the, the airport for 18 months. Um, no, no, so That's for crazy. nine months. And uh, he essentially kind of made a life for himself in that in the airport in the new york uh, airport and he made friends with with the staff uh, made some enemies of the staff and essentially just tries to go through the chronalization of uh, the events that happened to him during his tenure there so um overall this movie was made by steven spielberg as a sense of a feel-good kind of movie and it was and when I did watch it, I've watched it twice now. Um, I do remember feeling that warm feeling, of like awe. Oh, and, you know, they told some side stories about other characters falling in love. Mr. Uh, Victor, um, Tom Hanks' character, fall in love with Amelia. Ka- Catherine Zeta-Jones, of course. You know, if you meet Catherine Zeta-Jones, you'll definitely have to want to shoot your shot. And... Um, and yeah, and there is several small elements here and there throughout the course of the, is it two hour movie? Um, but it was very good in my sense. So how about you? How did you think about it? Celia? This movie really made me feel good. Mm. It was a kind of, uh, it was a, like a mix of laughter and sadness. That's what I like it. I mean, first of all, it was so funny, like how um, basically innocent he was and like his ideas about of America and, you know, getting into the New York. But on the other hand, you know, when he wasn't even speaking the language, I think Tom Hanks, he really like, he was brilliant. Because for me, he was really acting like someone that really don't know English. And the way that he was like acting, I mean, you would have never known that he's really American. And um, and he was so sad because he didn't even know the language. And he was trying to like watch TV when it was a war in his country and trying to understand what's going on. And... Um, Basically, I don't know. I, I, I really enjoyed the movie. And on the other hand, I really like the fact that although they were letting him to pass the border and I mean, pass the gate and go to New York, he basically, um, with his good personality and his good vibe and energy, he brought America to him. So we see that everyone loved him at the end. So everybody wanted to help him. And uh, that was for me, it's very important because someone that doesn't even speak the language, like you, with, with only with your character and your vibe and the way you, you, you talk to people, you get like so many fans that people love you. People are, are willing to help you and you don't even speak the language. So. Absolutely. That was very, very interesting. And another interesting thing, I don't know if you know it or not. True story. They basically made that airport. 
Yes, yes. So this was, is crazy. That so like this is why it was a sixty million dollar uh, budget, right? So just to build an airport, jo I, only because they wouldn't allow um, they wouldn't allow any sort of movie to be filmed in the airport for that long duration of time, right? So Steven Spielberg had to make a, an airport. Why? Why? Why they, they couldn't because of the flights and everything? It's essentially like, because you gotta essentially shut down. Uh, certain sections of the airport and that would just wreck um, the flow of getting uh, travelers to their destinations kind of thing so um, so really it just made better sense to to allow um, to just build their own set which in this case they did the upper level the lower level the food court back office and things like that those were all set pieces so um, yeah that's that is kind of cool. And then the the part that I thought you were going to make a mention of is that it's actually, this movie is based on a real life story of uh, Maran, Kara, Ma, uh, Maran Kamari Nazari, uh, who actually lived in the Terminal 1 airport of Paris, uh, Charles de Gaulle airport for 18 years, from 1988 Are to you serious? 2006. Yes. How come? So for him, he was, it was a matter of missing documentation and then also um, just that, yeah, missing documentation and it, having no real right to enter into the country or even go to another country. So he was from Iran, uh, in, initially Iran, but he claimed he was British. Um, and then in the case of, of moving around, uh, from one destination to another to meet his mother or claims to find his father, I, I think um, his documentation was missing. And then he just essentially started to just live in Paris airport and made a life for himself. So in that, was this? this was from 2008 to, uh, sorry, 1988 to 2006. So <laughs> this is, wow. on the, so when this movie came out, this was in 2004. So it was the tail end of his tenure there. Uh, the reason why he, he eventually left the airport was because there was speculation of him developing a brain tumor. But uh, up to that point, he did seek, he got medication or sought medical advice and consult from doctors that came to him there. Uh, he gained a fan, fan base, and which, which essentially kind of led to um, Spie Steven Spielberg finding that inspiration. Uh, into making it into a movie so i think they even had a plays forgot documentaries on this guy um but yeah so long story short um <laughs> mr kowalski uh his nine months tenure is nothing in comparison to 18 years of yeah, uh, of this moran who eventually called himself sir charles Ch charles i believe so yes so anyways to back to the movie um I think um, the fact that, you know, it's, it kind of warms your heart. Steven, um, Tom Hanks was really gave us an opportunity to um, empathize for his character um, during the course of the movie. And the, the arch enemy or the, the person that was the big bad in this movie was Stanley Tucci, which surprisingly it's, it's a little interesting for me to first to look at Stanley Tucci and not like him because he's all often played very memorable, uh, very warming roles, like fatherly roles, things like that. The only exception I remember is Transformers, uh, where he was a corporate man uh, trying to make some money. But long story short, um, I thought the introduction of different side characters and the side plots kind of thing, uh, which include love adventure things like that um, and ingenuity that uh, Victor Novosky had in order to to live in the airport was quite interesting because he also got himself found a way to make money got a job you know uh, had a cheeky little date at the airport with a air stewardess um, so I, I think for me it was a it was a but overall she, good movie yeah but but she helped him no she got, Who? She, she, she got him a visa. Uh, you're talking about Zoe Zaldana? 
um, Dolores? Are you talking no, about the air? The air. The Catherine Zeta Jones got him a visa. Uh, I don't know. He did not get him a visa. He did inter get interview with Stanley Tucci's character Frank Dixon, um, and did not like, essentially plead a case to let to make Victor not be appear as a bad person kind of thing. But it was actually the Dolores I thought that was, you know, guiding him and says, "Come back, do this for him. This is what you need to do." Kind of thing. So, um, for Catherine Zeta's character, she was the love interest, and essentially Victor was was essentially trying to, you know, win her over over the guy that she, Catherine was seeing, who was already a married man. Um, so, but she she ended up with him. Yes. So this okay. is yes. Yeah, so this is a spoiler alert. So in you know, it's a love story. You're trying to compel. You want Victor to get with Amelia, um, but at the end, uh, that did not happen. So we just had to still appreciate, you know, the story that happened, um, and and yet yeah, there was more. There was more to that story of the terminal than just that pursuit of Catherine Zeta Jones' character, which was the interesting part. So, like, mm -hmm. um, like Enrique, Enrique, who 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 was pursuing Dolores so played by Diego um, Enrique who was pursuing Dolores played by Zoe Zaldana um, that was another love story interest that was being played at the side you know so so my favorite scene uh, in this movie was uh, when Victor um, came across someone from his native country Kokosia, I believe um and the the man was trying to take medicine for to his father but Stanley Tucci is the immigration officer uh, I guess had, he was from Russia oh Russia okay yes and he wasn't from his country yeah but th th they say they they do understand each other because of yeah, the language exactly so um so essentially it was like you know this man trying to bring in medicine to go for a sick father but however the guy Stanley Tushu said, oh, you can't have it because it is against all laws. And then uh, Victor then said, oh, it's for your, it's your sick goat that you're bringing medicine for. And he found like a loophole in the system. And eventually, um, you know, Victor was, was helpful to this man to get medicine across the border for his quote unquote goat. So um, I, there's those kind of small things in there that really made me think like, wow, um you know it's this is this is how you get like a heartwarming moment and also you know it 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 was nice it's quite fortunate for that russian uh traveler to have victor help him out in this in that situation so it means like humans helping humans when possible and there is good out there kind of thing so um that was it for me what about for you i like this scene when when he was in the taxi in New York mm. and then the guy say where are you going and he was like in New York only like one day and then he said I'm going home mm. I like that and then and then he said like home is in my heart so home is here you know like so we basically saw that you know they took him at the airport for nine months that he had no intention because the problem with with us is that they, they think everybody wants to go there and stay mm. <laughs> which is not true like so many people they just go there they want to go on vacation but sometimes the way that they treat people at the airport is like that everybody wants to go and stay in the usa which is exactly. not true exactly so that was a kind of sad and it is sad that they still treat people that way mm. um that basically <laughs> nowadays, because of what we see on TV, so many Americans want to leave US and wants to live in Europe because of so many things which is happening there. So yeah. if that's the case, so Europe, Europe should also treat them the same thing, you know, the same way. Because now, because of all this shooting that we see in USA, 
I mean, me, honestly, I have been hearing like every day from American people that they're like, they would like to move to Europe if they can. Mm. So, so yeah, so that was very nice because this poor man, he just wanted to go out for one day to get a, sig- a signature from the, that Jazz musician Mitch, for yeah. his father. So he wasn't even planning to stay there, but they basically kept him like for nine months at the airport because of lack of trust. And they see everyone the same, everybody who goes to US. And if you are not from Europe, if you are from non-European country, there will always be question that you're going to go and stay in US. Exactly, yes. So it's... So this is sad, basically. It is, it is. But alas, um, uh, this the movie kind of uh, allowed for, I guess, maybe it, it put some immigration people in immigration status um, in better light or people that seek asylum. Um, you know, there's def- many different reasons why someone might leave their country to go somewhere else, but uh, his intentions were pure, were good, um, and it's a shame that you know, um, it it took it, it took that process of trying to win over pretty much the entire airport to allow for him to come out in a good stead. But it's all good. I I, I think um, for me too, what I find really great about this movie is that um, it is that what what we see in terms of human connection and growing and how people um how people made friends with him and helped him along the way there's good out there you know if you're if you're lucky enough you know you make enough friendships and you can make um and you provide something to other people some people could just be emotional support they can also help you back in some shape of manner, right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, and then I, I guess to you remember how we talked about uh, this was based on a real life story of, of Sir Charles or of me here. Um, there's actually many other uh, cases of people that have stayed in the airport for many months, right? There's been. Uh, there's a person, I think even during the making of this movie, there's someone in Shanghai um, airport that stayed there just because their wife said, either clean up, clean this mess or get out. And he, he chose to get out and he just stayed at the airport because it's a public domain. And there's another case of someone else in Brazil, I believe, that stays at the airport. So it's funny enough, you know, um, there are... <laughs> It, it seems that I'm not sure what, what happened first. Did the movie inspire those individuals or, or is it that people are, are finding a loophole of um, being able to stay in a place like the airport for an extended period of time? But, but it's interesting, to say the least. Interesting, to say the least. Um, but I think for me... Uh, this movie, even though it's classified as a drama romance, I would consider this more like a family movie, to be quite honest, because I, I think... Uh, it, was, it was classified as comedy as well. Is it? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I, had, I had noted it as, as drama. Uh, Netflix is comedy. Drama romance. Okay, good. So, um, overall, I guess, what would you rate this movie? Seven. Seven out of ten. Okay. Um, I will also give it a seven because it was actually quite heartwarming and you know it's definitely a movie I seen twice. Um and I'm I I hope that one day I'll be able to reintroduce this to my kids down the road, be like, watch this movie, you'll be impressed. You know, so uh yes, so I guess salty. Salted popcorn, average rating of 7 out of 10. Um, let's see what IMBD and Rotten Tomatoes said. IMBD uh, put 7.4 out of 10. And Rotten Tomatoes gave it 61%. All 
All right. So, um, so we're not too far off. That's good. So, uh, overall, good movie. If you not watch it, go out and watch it. And you know, when you watch it, be sure to share with all your friends and like, subscribe, and share our video with them, so that way they can also become inspired to watch the movie too. Um, but yeah. So, as for what we review next week, I will actually make sure we do a movie with blood and gore a little bit you know some action just because i know celia is celia grinds her teeth every time she has to watch it i, I watch most of the scene trust me i'm gonna be like this the whole movie don't worry i i don't do horror it'll be action it'll be a lot of explosions i might make it a michael bay movie or something like that so we shall see all right, thank you very much uh, for tuning in, and we'll see you all next week. And stay Happy out of trouble. Happy birthday to all those art farts out there, <laughs> myself <laughs> included. All right, we'll talk to you all later. All right, bye. bye.